Hello everyone. Here we will discuss the different types of spillways and how they operate. The first kind is free over fall spillway. So this is a spillway which is basically just an opening, maybe in the form of a weir or notch. Here what happens is the water is simply allowed to flow over that spillway and it forms a nap of water and falls directly to the downstream pool. These are generally suitable for arch dams because they do not have a large portion of the dam in the downstream. So the downstream is very steep or even straight sometimes. So therefore here water is simply allowed to fall directly to the downstream. One problem with allowing water to fall directly to the downstream is that it falls with a very high velocity and therefore it may cause erosion at the downstream where it falls. So what we can do is we can create a pool of water down here and we can calculate using some empirical equations relations what should be what could be the maximum scour depth because of the falling height of water so based on that we can decide the depth of the pool required up to the calculated scour depth and then provide some additional protection at the bottom in the form of rock ap aprons or sometimes concrete lining and so on The other type is the OG spillway or overflow spillway. So it has a shape, as you can see, a curved shape at the top and a reverse curve at the bottom. So the curve at the top resembles and actually coincides with the nap of water that would otherwise flow through a sharp crested weir. The tail or the toe of the spillway is given a reverse curve, a concave curve, so that water is smoothly diverted in the horizontal direction, directed in the horizontal direction, and it doesn't have a very large impact directly on the bottom of the river. One interesting thing about OG spillway is that for a design discharge, Since the water flows along this line and this line itself is designed in such a way that it coincides with the falling nap of water. So therefore while flowing at the design discharge it will not exert any pressure on this. So pressure at this point is equal to atmospheric pressure. When the, design di when the discharge is less than design discharge then it would otherwise flow like this. So, but since now we have provided the spillway, there will be some positive pressure on this. If the design discharge is slightly larger than, if the discharge is slightly larger than the design discharge, then at some point it may start to separate from the spillway slightly and sometimes it may cause some kind of negative pressure. And in negative pressure, as we know, some chances of cavitation is also there. So therefore, what we do is where there is that chance of developing negative pressure, we provide this kind of a step so that the jet is diverted away from the spillway so that this part, instead of becoming a very small gap, it becomes a very large gap so that at air can enter and it doesn't become negative pressure, it simply remains atmospheric pressure. Another kind of spillway is the shoot or channel spillway. So it's basically a steep channel through which water is diverted. The top of the channel may be designed like an OG spillway having that curved shape. While flowing through the channel, we may or may not provide some measures to dissipate 
the flow of uh, dissipate the energy of flow so sometimes we may provide this kind of roughness elements on this channel sometimes we give some stepped shape to the spillway that means instead of becoming a straight channel it is stepped in a way so that also reduces the energy as it flows through the flows down the channel another type of spillway is this morning glory spillway sometimes it's also called glory hole spillway or sometimes shaft spillway so what it consists of is a vertical entry shaped like a bell inverted bell sometimes it's also called a bell mouth spillway so when this is shaped like this in a way it also is designed just to match the natural flow curve of falling water this then leads to a tunnel and that tunnel is opened at the downstream of the uh, of the dam and that way the water is released another type is this side channel spillway here the spillway discharges into a channel running in the lateral direction of the spillway so the spillway is discharging this way and the channel is carrying water in the perpendicular direction one advantage of this kind of spillway is that as you can see we can increase the length of this spillway what it does is it increases the capacity of the spillway without increasing the height a lot that is to discharge a certain amount you need a certain amount of head behind the spillway okay? but if the length of the spillway itself is very large to this, uh, to release the same amount of discharge you require a smaller head that means in all the other structures like the dam and the embankments and all those things you will require a smaller freeboard because your spillway does not require a lot of head to discharge the design flood one additional information sometimes to increase the discharge capacity of weirs instead of providing this kind of a rectangular weir we provide this kind of a shape to a weir so that its effective length increases and therefore with a very small amount of head it can discharge a lot of water next is a siphon spillway a siphon spillway acts in the principle of a siphon where water enters through this mouth of the spillway and as the water level increases up to this level then the water the spillway starts discharging to the downstream at some point if the whole spillway because there is a roof here becomes full then it acts like a pipe a siphon pipe suppose and it operates under the maximum capacity when the water recedes when the water level in the reservoir starts to reduce then it still continues to discharge this water and it will stop only when this opening the entry is exposed to the atmosphere now let's discuss about energy dissipation in spillways so sometimes in case of a suppose oji spillway we provide this kind of roughness elements at the bottom so that when water flows over this spillway like this it 
hits one of the blocks, then takes a different path, swirls around a little bit, then it enters here, then hits another block, then again goes in the sideways, then again hits another block. So this way, by the time it reaches the downstream river bed, its velocity is considerably reduced. Sometimes we provide this kind of a jump, which is called a ski jump. So this kind of a ramp is provided so that when water flows like this, because of this ramp, it is again shot up into the atmosphere and as it flows through the atmosphere, the jet is broken down into smaller droplets because of air friction and when it reaches this downstream, we obviously have to provide some amount of water depth here so that it doesn't directly hit the river surface. So some depth of water is provided. But whatever energy it had right at this moment, because it had to again flow through this much distance through atmosphere, it has lost still some amount of energy and it has been broken down to smaller droplets. Another example is in case of channel spillway or shoot spillway, we provide this kind of roughness elements all throughout the length of the spillway. So this you can understand obviously reduces lots of its kinetic energy. To estimate how much energy is dissipated in these all these methods, we need lots of model studies. Sometimes empirical equations are required. But another very effective way of reducing this energy at the downstream is creation of a hydraulic jump. So we'll discuss that method in detail in some later video. So that's all for today. Thank you.